Hey everyone, it's May 26th, and that means that if today's your birthday, you share with German serial killer Peter Curtin, known as the Vampire of Dusseldorf, who murdered almost a dozen victims beginning when he was a child. And that is him right up there, and I'd like to apologize for my terrible German pronunciation. Born in Cologne in 1883, Curtin was the oldest of 13 children and grew up in absolute misery. The family lived in a one-bedroom apartment, and his father was a drunk who would often come home and beat the children. As the oldest child, he bore the brunt of the brutality, but even worse, his father would make the kids watch as he raped their mother. Unfortunately, in 19th century Germany, there was no support system for women and children in this situation, so they were forced to endure it for years. It's no surprise that Curtin gravitated towards horrific behavior, abusing and engaging in bestiality with animals and molesting his younger sisters. When he was nine, he pushed a friend off a raft as they played in the River Rhine. When another boy jumped in to help, Curtin held them both underwater until they drowned. The authorities ruled it a tragic accident, and he was left off the hook. The home front wasn't getting any better, and his father also engaged in an incestuous relationship with his oldest sister, eventually being put in jail for abusing her. Curtin left home as a teenager, living hand-to-mouth, stealing clothes and food to survive. He was in and out of jail for the next 24 years for theft and other minor offenses, and later claimed that the brutal treatment he received as an inmate made him want to seek revenge on society. In 1913, Curtin was searching for a home to rob and came across a nine-year-old girl who he killed, achieving sexual satisfaction from the act of slitting her throat. Her uncle was blamed and even tried for the murder, but fortunately wasn't convicted. It took 18 years before the authorities discovered the truth behind her death. He became engaged to a former prostitute in 1921 who had killed a man that left her at the altar, but the relationship didn't help control his urges as he killed again shortly after it ended. In 1929, he grabbed a nine-year-old girl and stabbed her to death, then set her body on fire, reaching climax during the attack. Curtin attacked many women and girls in a similar fashion over the next few years, stabbing them with sharpened scissors or strangling them. After sexually assaulting a woman in the woods in 1930, he let her go, and she was able to lead the police back to his apartment. She was so frightened by seeing him that she was unable to point him out to the police, and he remained at large. He moved and hatched a plan to have his wife turn him in for the substantial reward that now existed for capturing the Vampire of Dusseldorf. He went to the police and freely admitted to all of his crimes, even the ones that were previously unknown to be related to him. As he was led to the gallows in 1931, he asked, After my head has been chopped off, will I still be able to hear, at least for a moment, the sound of my own blood gushing from the stump of my neck? That would be the pleasure to end all pleasures. Curtin's decapitated and dissected head is on display at a Ripley's Museum in Wisconsin, so be sure to stop in and see it. If this is your birthday, I hope you have a great day. Leave me a comment so I can wish you a happy birthday. If you know someone whose birthday it is today, send them this video so you can find all about their birthday twin. And to Peter Curtin, I say, happy birthday, you bastard.